we have a really interesting guest today. Her name is Rhonda Liebig, and Rhonda is a number one bestseller of the Fit Solution, Four Steps to a Sexy, Successful You. She's been a regular on Fox News, The Orgina Rose Show, and a podcast radio show. She's a transformational force who will guide you to your insightful solutions for desirable results by sharing her signature template, the Top 10 Sabotages. Rhonda developed this template by listening to her clients' emotional pain and struggles throughout her 15 years in the health industry. She's found that this is one of the most powerful steps to do and can be one of the biggest roadblocks that typically prevent us from getting started. Well, first of all, I want to welcome you, Rhonda, to the show. Thank you. I am very excited to spend time with you. <laughs> well, you know, you um, you are what people call a holistic health coach. So tell people what that means and tell us whether or not you always knew that's what you were going to do. A holistic health coach is how I approach it is like a lifestyle for thinking about, you know, what do you want your future lifestyle to be and connected with that is your health. So helping people envision something bigger than what they thought they could get to and connecting that with foods, scrumptious, wholesome foods to really thinking clean. And that's where the sabotages came in of a template to really help approach that. And then also working on, on the physical movement too, you know, what's the best workout for you? So bringing all those three together for a wonderful, healthy lifestyle. And I always loved this area, and I didn't know how I was going to implement this into my life. And so I actually used to work in corporate and accounting as a CPA, and I thought I really loved it until I had Jacob and Kirsten, and I got in this mode where I felt like I wasn't doing anything right. I was so exhausted all the time, trying to be a mommy, to these two kids, um, feeling like I wasn't a great wife, feeling actually that my job was starting to falter too. So all three areas that were really important to me totally lost myself. So I actually transitioned into the health industry because I started having thyroid stuff. My hair was falling out. I felt really, really bad. And so the strategy that we're going to talk about today was, was really the pivotal point for me and mindset because I think that's the ultimate to get us there. Well, interesting, because I met Rhonda, and she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. So the fact that you would think that she had any of these uh, situations, you'd probably say, I can't believe it. But I guess it's true. So tell us what your strategies were for building what you call the top 10 sabotage list. You know, it's really hard to be a coach, and it's hard to bring people into a state of really change. You know, we find we know so many people that, I guess you could say if you know they're living in that, in that negative space because I think every day-to-day -day stuff, it's painful. Life has its ebbs and flows. So as a coach, how do I get – what have I been hearing people say? And then how do I get them out of that stage of um, yeah, the negativity, I guess is the best way to put it. And so I started listening to like the top sabotages that I was hearing that people were stopping and not moving forward in. And the stuff that I was failing in as a coach originally – and so I, I took a step back and I started thinking about, you know, how can I get them to that next level? How can I get them to the lifestyle that I really, truly, I can see they're a special person. I can see there's all these wonderful abundance of things that can happen for them, but how do I get them there? So listening, starting to kind of strategize with those, kind of playing with different clients and, and really figuring out what was working for them. And then that template came together and that is my most powerful tool when it comes to helping people, you know, make changes for their food and really stepping into taking care of themselves and making bigger changes for themselves so they can, you know, envision that. So a very powerful um, stage for me as a coach. So can you walk us through one of the main sabotages that you find people struggle with the most? Yeah, you know, there's, there's 10. So everyone is kind of has a lot to it, but I think, I don't know about you, Dr. Gale. I think that the biggest one that, that I see quite a few people say is just that, that they don't have time. Like, I, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. And why I, I really believe that this is something that we 
don't notice that's a sabotage because we hear so many people say it because we're always competing on, you know, my life is busier than yours and, and I have no time to do this or that. But the biggest thing is I think that there's a, a scared factor there. When we say I don't have time, usually it's because they're afraid to step into something new, maybe open themselves up. And so the biggest thing is taking a step back and starting to listen to that, that internal voice of, hey, I'm stopping myself from doing something new and experiencing new things. So looking at that and in the internal voice and realizing that the, the fear, the anxiety, and, and what's stopping you from getting to that next level. Well, you know, it's it's interesting um, because I do know that people say that. They say, oh, I don't have time for this or time for that. However, if they really looked at what they did and asked themselves, why am I doing it? They would probably yeah. find that they have more time than they thought. I'm sure that people are pressed today. There's no question. I mean, some people work in a job where they have to drive an hour or almost two hours to get there because of traffic. And so mm -hmm. really, uh, if that takes two hours out of your day, and then if you're at a job for eight hours, that's 10 hours. And then if you have kids and you're responsible for them and you have to uh, prepare dinner and you have to do homework and you have to do all these things, I mean, it's tough. But again, yeah, and, yeah. there are yeah. a lot of people I've, I've, that, I've, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I just, I find that, okay, so you're in that space, like even hearing it, you know, you kind of have that feeling of anxiety building up. And so, like, how do you get somebody in that space of saying, okay, I do have time. So, like, even when you're driving, um, there's things that you can be doing, like, just thinking about gratitude and space to be able to, once you get out of your car, that you feel positive about the space that you're in so that you can give yourself five minutes, maybe to stretch. Give yourself five minutes and write down, you know, like, the top five things that you're grateful for or that you want to do a yoga class, finding that space when you start looking at, you know, the extra time maybe you're spending on Facebook, maybe social media, um, you know, things like that, that really, once you take a step back and look at your schedule, the first thing I do is really look at organization of the day. And, and you're right, if you have kids, just like I do, and you have, you know, the cooking, which I love to do the cooking, but then you have all this time of just trying to do, do, do all these things. But you know what? Once you start giving to yourself just a little bit of five minutes here and there, you start actually finding 30 minutes for doing some space for yourself, sometimes even an hour, because it increases your energy and you get things done more efficiently. And you realize that just that energy in itself, that your brain starts thinking quicker, you have higher productive days, everything starts coming together. And so... That's, that's the way you start kind of tippy-toeing in with, with people that feel that way because it's anxiety that's really given us that space that I have all this stuff to do and I have no time. Well, I... So it's I, a very I, interesting I, process. I mean, I, when I'm driving, I'm either listening to um, a, 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 you know, well, I listen to classical music in the car. I like that very much. And it, it's very relaxing. But if I'm listening to um, a CD, it's usually... Uh, uh, something on either motivation or marketing or, uh, you know, as many people have said, it's a university in your car. So there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that you can learn while you're driving and you don't have to get uh, upset about all the traffic. And of course, it depends on where you live. I happen to be in cities with traffic patterns that are pretty uh, heavy. However, um, <clears throat> I would also say that, you know, there's probably everybody has 30 minutes. Everybody has 30 minutes in their day where they can make space for something. And if you can't make space for yourself in the 30 day in the 30 minutes, then something is wrong with your lifestyle. Something is wrong with what you're doing and exactly what you said, organizing your life in your day because there is a way to get around that. So, you wrote something called the FIT, F I T T solution. Uh, what what's in that book? And, and do you have a chapter that would support our listeners in living in gratitude? You talked about gratitude quite a bit. Yeah. So fit to me is like a physical thing. It's also the way your mindset and it's the way that you approach your day. And so I use the double T. So it's an F I T T, which is focus, integrate, transform and thrive. 
And I approach that in the way as anything with building goals. And this is what the book is about, is if you had me for six months, and we went through a coaching program, how would I be able to have, you know, these three pillars that are really strong, really approaching your day where you're going to find a space to work out at least a few times out of the week or more, where you're going to find the space to bring yourself into positive instead of feeling like when you're driving that you get upset because, you know, you're blaming everybody else instead of, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, getting upset, the wrong stuff and really focusing in on how you can change your lifestyle. Um, Also with the working out and the working out, you know, knowing what type of workout works for you. Maybe you're doing yoga and you have a heart condition where you really need to focus on the heart and the movement of the body. Well, maybe you need to change the workout that you're doing. So this book guides you as if I'm your coach threaded throughout the book. And so there's templates, templates, there's interviews. I don't know if you've ever heard of Bernie Siegel, but he's a man that's really inspired me. So I interviewed him because I thought I need to talk to this guy and have this be part of the book because I feel like he's like at the top of his level of working with people that are dealing with cancer and how he gets them into that space of being positive. So that goes along with, um, with the fit solution is no matter where you are in your life, that there's always a little bit of space to find some gratitude. And the more that you can step into that, the more you see things in a different way. And there's so many ways that our brain works where if you can start re building the brain to start thinking in a more positive way, more positive things happen for you. And these, in this book goes through all these important things about how your brain comes together and how there really is space to be a different person than you are right now if you're not feeling good about the space you're in. And I do, I talk a lot about gratitude. So at the end of the book, I talked about my gratitude and what the support that I've gotten from the change of, you know, being a CPA in corporate life to now being an entrepreneur and the, you know, the ups and downs with the entrepreneur of just getting in there and, you know, and working with people and dealing with, you know, as a coach. And I think everybody has this in any business they do, you know, the stress, the challenges that you have and how different that lifestyle was. So I bring, you know, a lot to, you know, my husband, I talk a lot about that. And I also bring it into, you know, what's your gratitude and the approaches I've done. I want to give this template to you and you can start working through some of the strategies that I've learned. And so the fit solution is, that's what it is, being your ultimate self, your fit self, your emotional fit self, your physical fit self, and connecting to your kitchen and really learning how to love your kitchen, not feeling like you're overwhelmed in there. So you know, sharpening your knives, making sure that you're, you're, um, you're really implementing the best food you can at this point because everybody's at different levels. And that's what the book is, is very endearing to everything doesn't have to be perfect. And I know that we live this lifestyle that you either are doing it right or you're not. But what I come in as a coach and say, if we work on something together or you're learning something new and you have like one bad day or you have five bad days out of 20 really good days? Did you really fall off the wagon? Or let's talk about those good days, those days that, that you really stepped in and you made some changes for yourself. You really, you really just kind of got off a little bit, but don't beat yourself up. This is the space that says, okay, I, I'm on a new stage now and I need to kind of reset myself. And I, I think I need to add some new tools and you just start playing with things. And so it's like a circle. Um, fit is where you go from the beginning, you find a goal that you believe that you love, love, love so much, and you just, you want to do it. And that's always, you get really excited about that stuff. So I think that's an easy step. You just go, oh my gosh, I want to lose 10 pounds, or I'm going to go for a walk every day because I feel really good. And so then you start integrating. And so the integration comes in with, you know, you're putting it in your schedule, you're figuring out how it's going to work for you. And then you start seeing the transformation. And the transformation is that, physically you feel good, or maybe you don't notice it physically, but then you start thinking, okay, I don't have to physically look at myself in a way that I'm going to break myself down, but I'm going to say, hey, those changes are going to happen at some point, but how am I feeling inside? And so we start thinking about, you know, do I feel happier? Do I feel like my circulation is better? Is my back feeling better? So that's the, that's the thrive part. That's the transformation part. 
And the thrive part is let's celebrate. And I think we forget that a lot. So let's thrive. Let's enjoy what is working right now. Out of the three components, now we're in the last stage of our goal. And even if we didn't fully make it, but we made shifts and we made changes in what we've done from the past. And so we've gotten somewhere. So if you forget to celebrate, which we usually do, a lot of us do not know how to celebrate ourselves, I think. You know, from the most people that we talk to, it's always, you know, I'm doing this wrong or that wrong. So how embarrassing for most people to say, oh, my gosh, I have to do a little dance of, you know, happiness for myself or even inside. Like, how embarrassing. So this is the biggest component because of this gets missed the most. Because we go into, well, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, and then the sabotages fall in. But let's just say you got halfway through your goal and you're ready to dance because you did get some, get some stuff going. Well, then let's go back up to focus again and let's reevaluate. What, what was wrong with the goal? Maybe I, I shouldn't be getting up at 6 in the morning and working out. Maybe I should get up at 5 to give myself more time. Maybe I should be changing things because my schedule has changed and I didn't equate that for that. And so you're thinking positive and you're moving forward. And each incremental step that you do, even if you don't get there 100%, look back, see where you were, document, journalize, journal your workouts, journal what you're thinking. It may seem overwhelmed right now, but that is your tool that's going to make you feel excited because you go, oh, my gosh, I probably didn't lose my 20 pounds that I wanted to, but I cannot believe the great relationships I have with my friends. How much more I'm talking, I'm not being so passive aggressive. And some things start coming together in life. Well, let so me that's ask the you a couple of things solution. about this, uh, Rhonda. Let me, let me go back to a couple of things. Number one, uh, you talked about, um, you know, how we, we uh, gratitude. And we talked a lot about um, uh, how you need to give yourself some space in, in various times of the day. What do you say to people who, I mean, they get up, and uh, they they just have things to do. They've got kids to get ready for school. They've got uh, mm-hmm. themselves to get ready. They may have to take the dog out for a walk. They might have to do a couple yeah. things. Uh, so w- when do they have time? I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but I want you to give your answer. <laughs> when do they have the time to look in the mirror and say, you know, I really like you. I like who you are. I like what you stand for. I like the way you operate. I like the the way you talk to people. I like what you give to people. And you are going to have an absolutely great day. So I love that. (laughs) I mean, I I love that. That, Okay, so I I think that is like a level three. I, I think let's go to level one. So level three is like you're just feeling, okay, I got this. I don't have any anxiety. Now I know I have control over my mindset and you're beautiful and there, it gives you that space to do that. So let's call that a level three. So level one, let's just say, I call it like the power three is we wake up in the morning, take three breaths, just take three. And, uh, but the breaths have to be where you feel it. Energy in, that's your inhale. Exhale. I'll just rid that space of maybe, maybe some aches and pains in your body Maybe the anxiousness of starting. Maybe, you know, we talk, I talk quite a bit about organs. So maybe your liver hasn't released those enzymes in your body that you're re- really, really ready to wake up. But take the three so then your body, your, chemically your body changes. So just three. Then you want to start just a basic stretch. So maybe just reach for your toes. I say maybe because there's two different types of stretches that you should do. Maybe one is reaching for the toes. Maybe one's like a windmill where you're just kind of stretching side to side. Those two are really powerful. So, you know, you just do a couple stretches before you get out of bed. And then you drink a big glass of water. That's the lowest part of the day when you, of your water. And if you do that, that's where a lot of our anxiousness is. That's where a lot of our stress is. So that's your level one, just kind of doing some basic things. But what you'll find is you keep doing that and – People get anxious about this because they want to do more. They want to say, well, I want to go on this diet and I want to do this and that. But let's, let's go stay to that level one so you can start feeling the energy and start being lighter on yourself. And then stage two would be that you are starting to feel like that glass of water you need in the morning because you're starting to feel the brain clarity. 
you're starting to realize that um, that the kidneys really need that extra water, help filter out the system from the detox through the night. Brain starts filling up because we need that water, so the brain actually has anxiety when there's not enough water in our system. We kind of run more on anxiety. We usually have more pains in the back of our legs. So connecting with you know what that means of having having those three, the power of three. So then you can start looking at yourself and going, hmm, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Hey, I'm starting to feel better about myself. You kind of start listening to the way you're talking to yourself. Get comfortable with you saying positive stuff about yourself, and it starts growing into something bigger. It's all personal depending on how deep you are in your feeling of being really pushed down, hunkered down from day to day. But there is a space there to get to level three, and it takes practice, and it takes actually you get connecting with your pain. You know, what's holding you back? And connecting what is important to me right now. And what's my worst pain right now? What Am I waking up in the middle of the night and thinking these terrible things? Well, what am I thinking about? What stresses me out the most? What keeps me awake? What makes me stressed through the day? And the more that you can step into that and really be truthful about it, that the more you're going to connect with how you want to make that change. And that's probably the level two area. Level one, you don't Wait, want to go too We don't deep. have time for all these levels, Rhonda. I've only got five minutes left on the show. So <laughs> <laughs> you just keep asking away then, doctor. You just keep asking okay, away. <laughs> so uh, what of the other 10 sabotages can you give us? Can you tell us what they are? Yeah, I could. I was thinking about the one about I can't lose weight. You know, we have quite a few people that say, I can never lose weight. I can't lose weight. You know, okay, I try and I restrict I my calories. To, I don't want you to get into your explanations because I want everybody to get the 10. So we have, um, I can't lose weight. Uh, what's another? Yes. What's so another? I'm going I'm, I'm to give you a total of three out of the 10 today. So okay. another one is, I never finish anything. I can never finish anything because I'm too busy. Well, that is something that uh, a lot of people do say to themselves. I can't, well, they don't even say because I'm too busy. They just say, I can't finish anything. I mean, they, they, they say it as a declarative statement. Uh, this is who yes. I am, and I just can't finish anything. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that's yeah. kind of how they say it, you know? So, um, all right, so let's ask you, where can they go to find these 10 sabotages, and where would you like people to find you? Oh, wonderful. Great question. So I have a special page for us, Dr. Gail. I have RhondaLiebig.com. And that's, uh, tell them how you spell that. Uh, Rhonda, R-H-O-N-D-A. My last name is German, so it's L-I-E-B as in boy, I-G, dot com. And if you want to find the 10 sabotages, you're going to go to RhondaLiebig.com forward slash Dr. Gell, which is D-R-E-A-Y-L-E, -E, and that'll get you there. Fantastic. That's great. Okay, so I, I just think, you know, you're a wealth of knowledge, um, uh, Rhonda, and I think that, um, you know, if, if people really want to change, and that's the first thing, they have to want to change, you mm -hmm. can't say you want to change and not believe it. You've really got to want to change. So if, if they really want to change and they look at these 10 sabotages and they identify any of, any of them with themselves, then they really need to start to work on this and they need to do a, a good job of it. So I want to tell people again, it's Rhonda, R-H-O-N-D-A, Liebig, L-I-E-B-I-G dot com. And then if you want the 10 sabotages, just put a forward slash and put Dr. D.R. Gale, G-A-Y-L-E. You know, this has been terrific, Rhonda. I mean, you're just a wealth of information. And I know I can tell by your passion that you just get so involved with your clients that if they don't improve, you just feel that, wow, I have not done my job. So <laughs> I, want to, I want to encourage anybody who's listening, go to Rhonda's website. And if you're interested in a health coach, especially a holistic health coach, Talk to Rhonda, see what she's like, see what she's about, see if she feels she can help you, because I think she would do a fantastic job for you. And, uh, you know, I just am very happy that you were able to be with us today, Rhonda. Is there any, you know, I just, I think that's it. I'm just going to tell them to go find you online. And if they're interested in, in having you as their coach, uh, get in touch with you and sign up. And I really- Thanks, Dr. Gale. 
<laughs> You're welcome. And I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. I really had fun. <laughs>